Good morning. Next week, Massachusetts Republicans will meet in caucuses across the state to choose delegates to represent the, our state at the Republican National Convention in July. And this year, the process is of special interest because of the possibility that the presidential nomination might go to a second ballot at that convention for the first time in 40 years. Well, here to talk about all this are our local supporters of the two leading GOP candidates on the left of your screen, Representative Jeff Deal of Whitman. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks, John. He backs Donald Trump and Representative Jim Lyons of Andover, a supporter of Ted Cruz. Representative, welcome to you. Thank you, John. Good to have you both here. Let me start with you, Representative Lyons. Donald Trump says it's time for the party to unify <coughs> behind him and start focusing on beating Hillary Clinton. Are you buying that? Absolutely not. I think what we'll find since Arizona actually is the, the party is unifying behind Ted Cruz. Uh, prior to uh, the, uh, the, the, the Tuesday primary, uh, our candidate, uh, Senator Cruz, basically has won every single event. He won Wisconsin, he won North Dakota, he won Wyoming, he won Colorado. And the number of delegate uh, sp uh, spread was, I think, 122 to 7. So I think what he is right about is that the Republican Party is coalescing around the message of Ted Cruz. I got a feeling you want to rebut that, Jeff. <clears throat> well, I think the insiders that we're always so concerned about trying to rig the system may be coalescing around Ted Cruz, but the voters clearly are choosing Donald Trump at this point. I mean, New York was an incredible win, 60 percent. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, here in Massachusetts, we saw 20,000 Democrats unenroll so they could vote for uh, Donald Trump, 45,000 more votes than uh, Mitt Romney. So right here in Massachusetts is great evidence, and it's been happening across the country as well in these primaries. Do you think Cruz and John Kasich should drop out and back Trump? I don't think necessarily uh, uh, Mr. Kasich should be in the race anymore, but I do think uh, Ted Cruz can make the case that uh, he's running for a second ballot uh, convention. However, I think at this point that may be um, a moot as well because I think Donald Trump will get the 1237. Well, we're going to talk about that some more, but I wanted to follow up quickly with you, uh, Jeff. Last week, the Associated Press reported the top aides to Mr. Trump told Republican National Committee officials that their candidate has been, quote, projecting an image in this campaign, but quoting again, the part that he's been playing is now evolving in a way that'll bring down his sky-high negative ratings. Do you believe Trump has been playing a con game? No. No, I think uh, when you had 17 candidates in the field, Donald Trump did what it was necessary, I think, at that point to make sure that uh, as an outsider, he got the awareness necessary to make it a two-man race at this point. Uh, but I think what you've seen is his policies, making sure that our borders are strong, rebuilding the middle class with jobs, uh, and projecting strength internationally. Nationally, I think that has been solid all along. No change there. You buying that, Jim? I mean, clearly the one person who's, who's run a campaign that's been principled and consistent and conservative has been Senator Cruz. And with, uh, with, with the public now recognizing, you know, that it is a two-man race, that's why we're seeing everyone in the party coalescing around the senator. We believe that this is a critical election. We've got the Supreme Court being held in the balance. And the person that appoints those... Nomin no uh, nominates to the Supreme Court is a critical uh, person with solid judgment, and that's why we need Ted Cruz. We have to take a break, but uh, Trump won this state overwhelmingly on primary day. A state that knows its politics very well. Well, what evidence is there that any of them are, uh, are prepared to coalesce around Cruz? Well, I think there's been almost 60 days since the March 1st election. Uh, at that point, there was a lot more candidates in the race. We're now down to the two. And I think that what we're seeing in Massachusetts is people coming to the Cruz candidacy. And I think we're continuing to grow not only in Massachusetts, but across the country. All right, gentlemen, take a breath. And when we come back, let's focus on these caucuses that are coming up next weekend and the whole debate over the rules and how they're being addressed. When we continue in a moment, stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking with uh, two local supporters of the two leading Republican presidential candidates. State Representative Jeff Deal is a Trump supporter. State Representative Jim Lyons is with Ted Cruz. And, and uh, Jim, this state, as I mentioned before, voted overwhelmingly for Donald Trump. You're right. That was a couple of months ago. But that's the way they voted. And while it may be within the rules for you and the Trump campaign to want to stack the Massachusetts delegation with pro Cruz people in anticipation of a second ballot, is it fair to all those voters? Well, I think the system is, that we set up, to be honest with you, is, is very fair. And what 
people have to do in, in this process is they have to sign a pledge to follow the will of the people. And that pledge is going to be signed by everybody that is certified as a delegate uh, going to the Cleveland Convention from On the first ballot. Correct. And that's what, the, that's what our rules are. The rules okay. are very straightforward that on the first ballot, you know, there are certain votes going to go to, uh, to Senator Cruz, certain votes to Rubio, certain votes to Kasich, and obviously right. the votes the majority to, to, Donald Trump. to Donald Trump. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> and it's the Trump campaign that said that they're going to win all 27 <laughs> delegates. You know, what, what we believe it should be a fair system. We support the system. As a matter of fact, I worked with his co-chairman to put together the, uh, the rules at the allocation committee. So I think we have a fair process in place. So what's with all this whining from the Trump campaign? Just what, just what you called it, whining. No, no whining. Look, in New Hampshire, for example, when uh, they choose their, their candidate on primary day, they also choose their delegates. In Colorado, it's a navigated process that the state uh, elected uh, uh, state party people can help with and help sort of the establishment try to steer it away from Trump. He wasn't talking about the system being rigged. He's talking about how people are working to maneuver the system to favor one candidate, and that's rigging it. But in Massachusetts, we are certainly prepared. Uh, we know the process, and we've been preparing for it uh, since the primary. Uh, by the way, people can go to DonaldJTrump.com slash MA to help out with the Trump campaign on April 30th. Uh, but, you know, we're ready to put forth a slate of delegates in each of the districts. We are hoping to win even the Trump slots. Um, and of course, uh, I'm sorry, the Cruz slots, and uh, you, we would vote for Cruz in the first ballot uh, as required, but then hopefully support Donald Trump in the next, if it came to that. He said there's no whining, that it's not about the system being rigged, it's about the rules being maneuvered, right? That's what you said. Well, Do you agree with that? Well, in Massachusetts, I mean, I think we've set up, a, it was a unanimous vote of the, uh, of the allocation committee. I think we've set up a fair process, and the caucuses are for the grassroots, for people who want to be involved in the process to go to the uh, caucuses, get themselves elected, and then go to Cleveland. We saw it in 2012, and what was seen is a, a large number of young people who are still engaged in the process. So the fact is that this is a fair process. We're going to go to the caucuses, and we're going to go to the convention, and we're going to follow the rules. So when Trump says, oh, they'll, there might be riots if I'm denied the nomination on a second ballot, w is that your view as well? That, no. You no. know, it would be this terrible, unfair outrage if, if he doesn't wind up winning the nomination? Well, let me put it this way. He's currently leading by almost 300 delegate in, in the delegate count right now, and we see that uh, lead increasing with the five contests coming up next week. Uh, if that's the case and he goes in so strongly uh, in the lead with the delegate count, the, the popular vote generally millions more voting for him than uh, uh, Ted Cruz, then we do see that if for some reason there's an attempt to steal at the convention, that is a problem. I don't think riots is necessarily, uh, you know, the right word, but I think what he's saying is there will be certainly discontent at the convention and probably across the country. Do you take that as a threat? Uh, I'm not going to comment on whether it is or it isn't a threat. I think what the process calls for is 1,237 votes, 1,237 delegates. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln won on the third ballot by three votes. We're hoping to go to the convention and become the next nominee. We are playing by the rules, and we will consistently play by the rules. What do you two gentlemen make of the fact that in just about every poll I've seen, head to head, Hillary Clinton beats the tar out of both of your candidates? Well. I mean, we're at the same position where Ronald Reagan was uh, back in 1980, where his unfavorabilities were uh, high at the time. Very, people were very nervous about him. Even the Republican Party was trying to hold him back. Ultimately, when it became a two-person race, he was able to succeed clearly. And I think that's the same thing that will happen with either candidate uh, coming out of the convention for us. Do you find Trump to be Reagan-esque? Uh, we look, no. We look forward to uh, the, the debates in October with Hillary Clinton against Ted Cruz debating who the next president of the United States should be. Go ahead. Last word to you. Quickly. Bringing the middle class, working class Democrats to the table for Donald Trump, as it's been shown in a lot of states, I think it's going to get even bigger. Uh, and the dissatisfaction with the Democrats, uh, with Bernie Sanders being frozen out the way he has, I think is going to give Donald Trump that chance to be the new uh, Reagan for uh, this, this cycle. Well, history will show Reagan carried Massachusetts both times, so it should be interesting. Gentlemen, and Speaker DeLeo did say that D Donald Trump has a chance to win Massachusetts. You buy that? All of a sudden, you're supporting the uh, Speaker of the House. <laughs> Uh-oh, now it's just starting to get interesting. Gentlemen, thank you. I appreciate Andy. you both being here. Good luck next weekend, and thank you very much for joining me. Right now, I'm going to send it back over to my colleagues for more WBZ News.